planning for a hike in the um, southwest of Tasmania doing the south coast track um, with a food drop in the middle followed by the Port Davy track and we're going to take pretty much 13 days and um, I just thought I'd run through what I'm taking on that trip um, my walking poles I've got the um, CNOC or knock if you use the silent C I think C knock sounds good um, carbon fiber poles um, I've just strapped some um, tape around there just repair tape for whatever and then uh, none of this is packed in my bag because it's what I'll wear I've just got a lightweight sort of sun hoodie um, there just a marmot thing see the summit um, quagmire canvas gaiters um, uh, just a short sleeve wool icebreaker shirt that I'm going to wear most of the time and um, my buff um, a peak cap a pair of socks I've started over the last few years wearing the uh, Injinji toe socks the thin liner socks um, it stops um, it stops blisters sort of in between my toes and whatever um, just makes my feet feel a little bit snugger in the shoes the shoes are fairly new to me they're a um, uh, a topo trail runner um, and a pair of uh, just north face lightweight running shorts they've got the jocks built into them here's the one thing i'm not sure i'm taking a pee bottle <laughs> everyone stirs me but i love not having to get out of my sleeping bag or my my um, quilt in the night time to go out and find a toilet and as i'm getting older um, I tend to get up once or twice during the night and if it's a freezing cold wet rainy night take it or not um, I'll put the weights of all these things up uh, in the video and uh, at the bottom there so you can see um, my pack here and I'll bring it in um, I've decided uh, I had a, a Waymark pack um, that I was going to use but it was a 38 litre and uh, in a couple of trials that I did, I just, I'm, I'm carrying a bit of camera gear and whatever. My, my, my gear was too heavy for the lightweight um, harness system for the Waymark. So I've gone up 10 litres and moved to um, the, uh, the Exos. I've done some uh, changing to the Exos. I've cut um, the, the whole back off the Exos and added my own full stretch. The uh, original Exos has a full panel down the middle that doesn't stretch and I felt like I needed more stretch and so I cut the back off and then and uh, stitched on a new, um, a new panel. Um, uh, my Crocs just hang off the back there. I don't like anything hanging off my pack really so this is as close as I get to hanging anything off my pack. I hate things bouncing around. Um, let's just talk about what is in the back. Um, I have access uh, in here to my first aid kit. Uh, I have a ditty bag um, which has rid um, tinea cream, wet feet for two weeks, you never know, patch kits, you know, tenacious tape, earplugs. Um, it's also got my toothbrush. Um, I'm taking toothpaste and tablets um, this time. Um, uh, a pen, some swabs, you know, alcohol swabs. Yeah. So that's kind of my ditty bag. It's a, probably an oversized, overkill ditty bag, but it's got lots in it. Uh, just a little notebook. I like to journal. Um, I've actually got a couple of uh, snake bandages. There are a lot of snakes around the walk that we're doing, particularly in the second week in the Port Davy track. So I've thrown in a couple of snake wraps there. Um, got a collection of tablets here, some heavy duty sort of Nurofen with codeine, um, but just basic Panadol, um, uh, some sleeping tablets, some... <laughs> nodos um, uh, bits and pieces uh, there's a course of antibiotics in there um, that's pretty much all you know they're just a, just in case kind of things uh, an emergency blanket and um, and that's it in the first aid kit the other thing I've got in, in the in the pack is my um, I've got an Arcturix fairly lightweight but not it's not an ultra light um, jacket it's um, we get some pretty serious rain in Tasmania so I've opted for a slightly heavier, but new version, sort of two and a half layer Gore-Tex. And um, that is just a pair of um, lightweight waterproof pants. That's the only long pants that I'm taking. I've got a, a long pair of um, icebreaker thermal, you know, woolen pants. 
uh, worn thermals. Um, so I'll wear those in the night time and if it gets cold and windy and wet, I'll throw the um, those on over the top. So that's all I've got in the, in the back panel. I just use that bum pad, not as my seat, because I'm actually this time taking a proper seat, a, um, a Helinox, um, you know, 500 gram seat. Um, so this will go in the seat if everything's wet and cold. You get a cold bum sitting in those seats because you're off the ground. But it's also my door mat. When I'm organising my bed and everything inside my tent, I'll kneel on that outside the tent in the mud or whatever. I just find that really handy. So I'm only taking that water bottle. Um, and in my front pouch here, I carry my water bottle that I access all the time. That's only a, what is that, a 700 mil. So I'm not quite taking two litres of water. There's a lot of water running in Tasmania, so we don't need to carry excess amounts of water. Um, I also have my um, my Catadon Bee Free filter. If I needed to, I could fill that up. That's a litre. So um, attached to that pouch as well, I don't know whether you can see it, is my tiny little um, uh, Victorinox um, knife. That's all I carry. Just It's got a pair of scissors, it's got a toothpick, it's got you know tweezers and uh, a sharp blade, um, maybe a nail file in there as well but that's the only knife I, I take um, in the other pouch I've got a pair of sunglasses um, in, a, in a bag um, uh, headphones um, easy access to the headphones there I actually throw in a compass I never use it but call me old school but I just keep it I've got a paper mat somewhere and um, and a compass but most of the time I'll be using the um, um, the Far Out used to be called Gut Hooks Guide um, to these two tracks. They've both um, been uploaded um, on, on Gut Hooks or Far Out. Um, I've also got, and this won't stay in here, it's just my, um, my sun cream. That'll hook onto a hook here, at easy access. And the phone that I'm filming on here, um, it might just just a basic iPhone uh, SE version 2. I like those because they're quite small but they still take decent video footage. That'll sit in the front pouch of this um, this here. That that little pouch, they're all add-ons to this pack. This is just an ultralight hiker, um, and that's a Waymark. The bottom pouch um, down there, um, that's a Waymark. Yep, I can see that, that's a Waymark. And in that, that's my hip pouch. In here, um, I carry my GoPro, just a little GoPro. I, the more I use this, the less I use accessories. And I'm down this time to just the um, um, basic, just the GoPro. Uh, I've probably thrown in one or two accessories along the way. Um, and in here is my snacks. It's just food, my first day, a bit of lunch. Um, most of my lunches are just cliff bars. Um, and I'm a big fan of peanut butter. So that'll be one week and I'll have a second one flowing in um, with the food drop. So that's chapstick. Chapstick's good because you can also use it if you get, you know, chafing on your nipples or in, in your bum or whatever. I probably wouldn't recommend it using straight off the stick in your bum and then on your lips. <laughs> um, but you can use that as anti-chafe. So all of those kind of little bits and pieces stay in the pockets. So that's um, that's all the pockets. Um, then in the actual pack, oh, in the top of the pack here, um, in the top of the pack, um, Oh, there's my Catted and Bee Free filter. Um, and also in the top is my um, toilet bag. It's just my um, juice of spades, um, shovel and some toilet paper. Um, toilet paper. I'm averaging seven sheets of toilet paper a day. Um, so that's and a bit of hand sanitizer in there. Um, and that's all I've got. Uh, that's all I've got in there. Um, so let's open the pack up and see what's inside the pack. The tent um, sits in here. It's an XMED Pro. It's a two-man tent. I'm just using it for myself. Uh, you know, it's a super light tent. It's the ducks and nuts of tents, so I spent too much money on it for sure. But um, it's all, um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's super light. What is it, around 600, and 600 grams? So I use my two walking poles to hold that tent up. So it has no, no poles at all. I always use two walking poles anyway, so I didn't have to carry, I didn't have to buy anything extra. I don't have to carry anything extra. Um, the top of this uh, is my food bag. Now, obviously, heading off for seven days, I've got a very full food bag. 
um, oh, this is something that will also go down the side. <laughs> As I said, there's a lot of rain in Tasmania and I hate walking in my Gore-Tex jacket. I get too hot. So we've been experimenting with some umbrellas over the last couple of years. And yes, it looks really big, but it just sits down the side of the pack. I don't normally pack it inside, but that's just for transporting it on the plane. Um, it weighs nearly nothing and it straps onto the pack. You don't have to hold it. I can still use my walking poles if I want to. And um, if you're not in the trees and if it's not blowing a gale, then it's pretty good. Um, up the top here I've got, which will be a, a little gas bottle. Um, I'm gonna go very conservative on gas. I'm gonna use a small bottle for the first week and a small bottle for the second week. Will one little baby bottle of gas go for my Soto stove for the whole week? Uh, I don't know, but I don't care. If I run out, it doesn't matter. It just means I'll be drinking my instant coffee cold, um, which is fine, um, cold brew coffee, um, and I'll be cold soaking my evening meals, which is fine as well. I've done that before. Um, so um, yeah, I'll do that. And my long handled spoon to get into the bottom of those. So uh, yeah, in um, in my little, it's titanium, you know, it's a just standard tokes outdoor um, titanium 700. Um, uh, everything's in there. It's the Soto, um, can't remember what model Soto that is, um, but it's a great, a great little stove, it's real reliable. Um, um, and I've just got, um, that's also titanium, that shield. Um, just and I've got a little um, paper clip on the side because it just secures it when you're when you're wrapping that around. In fact, I've trimmed and cut that whole thing. There was way too much titanium um, when I bought that from probably a Tokes product as well. So I've cut it and trimmed it. You can see the edge there. And then I just bought some tape from Bunnings and um, and sealed the edges. Um, it's like heat tape. Um, another DCF bag. Um, here, this will sit in the very top of my pack, up up in the brain. Um, that's my um, that's my drone. So I've uh, packaged the whole drone and the controller box, um, and ultimately the spare batteries inside a little drawstring bag that sits in there. I've just wrapped it up in some DCF, um, and then it's just GoPro accessories. I've got a little tripod in there, just a lightweight. Um, a tripod I've upgraded from the tripod that is being used there to uh, the little Pedco um, tripod, super lightweight plastic, and it's got Velcro so you can you can attach it to um, the um, walking pole and use it as kind of a selfie stick. And I've adapted it, put a little, um, you can see the blue GoPro adapter on there. Um, and then everything else inside um, the bag is inside um, one of these Polycro, one of these Polycro um, heavy, sort of it's a heavy duty but ultra lightweight um, plastic. I think it's called Poly, it's not Polycro, is it? Anyway, I'll write it down there for you. Um, and it's all, it's all the stuff in here that I want to keep waterproof. Like all my electrical gear, because I'm away for two weeks, I am taking with me a little um, solar panel um, to charge my. Um, my battery so it's this is ridiculously heavy and i constantly wishing i'm not taking it but i am because i do want power and uh i've got the little a uh, night core um you know it's a very lightweight 10,000 um uh, battery it's an excellent uh, i'm very glad i bought that it's um wrapped in carbon fiber so it's super lightweight and then there's nothing else in this bag of interest to you it's just the cords that i i require and, and my head torch, I've got the tiny little, um, the, the weeny little Petzl, um, I forget what they, what they call it. As promised, paper map um, for the um, south coast and, um, and Port Davy walks. Um, but as I said, it'll just probably stay in the pack and uh, we'll view it at night time. Maybe you'd call this a luxury item. This is the Nemo Philo um, pillow. Um, I've had the, yeah, the Eros light, the, all the Cedar Summit ones. Um, and ultimately I find this is the best pillow that I've got. In here is a head net, a, a fly net, not a head net, I'm not going out cooking, um, but a fly net that I tuck the pillow into the fly net and pull it over the top of my Nemo Tensor um, sleeping pad um, and it stops the pillow from moving anywhere. Mm. I, I kind of have done away with a lot of the bags for these things. I, I just find that if everything comes with a bag, you just add more grams to your weight. 
So speaking of more grams, I don't use the um, air thing that pumps up my Nemo Tensor. And here's the little luxury that I've just picked up. I picked up um, a little pump. <laughs> so it's not much more weight than the ba bag, the airbag that you can use to pump up these things. The reason why people use airbags and pumps is because if you're pumping these up regularly, they fill with black mold from the moisture that's in your mouth. So um, a little pump and uh, it doubles as um, a light in the evening. You can hang it with taking a hoochie with us so all four of us can sit around in our deck chairs <laughs> um, in the evening and uh, we can hang a little torch uh, from, uh, from the top. I've decided not to um, stuff all my clothes just in here freely because I kept losing a sock or losing a beanie. So um, I've decided to throw them into just a, a, a dry bag. Um, all I've got for extra clothes um, when I get to campsite is a thermal top. Um, mostly wool, um, an extra pair of socks, warm socks, um, and uh, a beanie, and there's those uh, long johns that I was talking about, the, um, the wool long johns, and probably uh, yeah, a pair of icebreaker jocks and a pair of gloves there. Um, just my fingers get so cold, so I'm just throwing in a, um, a lightweight pair of um, icebreaker woolen they're sort of undergloves, but Tassie, it's summer. I mean, it's not gonna snow. A, a puffer jacket um, is is good. Um, that's a Patagonia puffer jacket. Um, and then um, I have um, the Enlightened Equipment, um, I think it's the Revelation um, quilt, um, custom quilt. Um, I, I do love my quilt. It's so warm, it's so light, it weighs next to nothing. And I just I just stuff it in here. I don't I don't like the feeling of a solid object pressing into my back. And the only other thing down here is a a, um, a liner. I've got the silk liner, see the summit with the stretchy sides. It's got elastic um, sides. Um, it just is because sometimes I just feel so restricted in a silk liner or any kind of liner, a cotton liner or a silk liner. Um, um, and I just like to have a little bit of stretch. And so there's two bands of elastic down the sides of these ones. I find them um, really good. Um, I bring a liner partly because I don't want to be washing my quilt all the time. You know, like even once a year is too much. I just like to be in the liner to keep everything clean. But also, this is a very warm quilt. On a warm night, I, I will often not even go near that and I'll just sleep in my liner. So it gives me almost a summer and a winter option for those warmer nights. Uh, let me just run through the food again. Um, you know, there's a there's a backcountry um, back one and um, another one of those outdoor gourmet companies. I really do like those. And then, you know, um, and for snacks, um, I've gone with fruit, the, um, the, the um, crispy fruits, freeze-dried fruit. So there's apples and mangoes and pineapples. There's nothing in that. That's like, what is it, 10 grams? 10 grams, and that's a whole apple. Um, interesting, with freeze-dried fruit, it contains 99% of the nutritional value of the original apple, whereas dehydrated fruit loses 40% of the nutritional value according to Google. Um, and so I've opted for these um, these snacks. So a piece of fruit a day in, in that. Um, and the usual kind of, you know, I've got a couple of blocks of chocolate over a week. So I bought uh, four blocks all over. The other two will be delivered to me in a little aeroplane. As I said, I'm going with, um, I'm going with instant coffee this trip. Just don't talk to me about it, instant coffee. but. Yeah, it was light and easy, and I don't need to bring a grinder and all that sort of stuff. A cliff bar every day for lunch um, is my go-to. Um, my breakfast is so nutritional and nutritionally dense that when I tried out this breakfast um, in the Stirling Ranges this year, I just wasn't hungry. Even at lunchtime, a cliff bar was enough, and I did hardly have any snacks. And then usually in the afternoons, we'll, we'll mix up some tuna spread or some hummus, dehydrated hummus, and just have some afternoon bickies and, 
and um, and so on. But yeah, that's um, that's kind of my uh, that's my menu at a glance. I didn't give it to you in great detail. There's random snacks in here. I've thrown in a, you know, I've thrown in like two Mars bars um, over seven days, and um, and that kind of thing. So food drop um, comes in in a cardboard box. Um, I'll wrap everything in plastic. They drop it off a, I think a couple of days before we arrive at the airstrip in the middle of this um, two week hike. And um, I have thrown in a, an extra pair of Injinji socks, um, and uh, I've thrown in some um, cans of gin and tonic um, into the food drop, um, mainly because um, my brother and a mate, Neil, are, are, are leaving uh, on that plane um, on the day, um, the day after we arrive there. So they're only doing a one week walk with us. Ross and I are going on to finish the two weeks. And so they can take rubbish out with them. So uh, empty cans of gin and tonic. Um, I've ordered, yeah, you know, I've ordered. I've included a pack of, um, uh, you know, spicy chips and some peanuts and some things like that that we'll eat while we're sitting there at the airstrip because we've got a day off there. So we've got two nights at the airstrip.